Hey, what's up, everybody? Ricky Carruth here. Uh, glad to have you. Thank you for listening to my podcast today. I want to share with you a team meeting I had uh, recently with my South African team uh, that's growing uh, very quickly over there. And it's a great group. And uh, they're, they're having uh, tons of fun. And I'm having a lot of fun learning the South African uh, real estate industry. But I really go deep on prospecting here and the philosophies behind it. Um, I really, really kind of get loud, if you will. This is going to be a very exciting uh, podcast for you guys to listen to. And uh, I'm happy to share it. So hit me up on Instagram if you need anything whatsoever. And I will talk to you guys soon. Enjoy. So we have Vion here. Vion. How you doing, Ricky? Good, good, man. Vion is our newest member of our team here. Vion, uh, introduce yourself to the rest of the rest of our group here and let everyone know uh, where you're at, how long you've been selling, and uh, all that good stuff. Hi, guys. Um, good to see you all. Um, I just, uh, yeah, I've, uh, I've been uh, in real estate for about six months. Um, you know, I was transitioning out of something else. I'm based in Pretoria, uh, Pretoria East mainly. Um, so, Antoinette, I'd love to hook up with you at some point. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I've uh, been yeah. following, following Ricky for a while and, you know, learning as much as I could. Um, learning about, you know, AdWords and all different things. And uh, yeah, my first three deals that I've got uh, is actually three different properties that amounts to 20 hectares of land. So, <laughs> I jumped in the deep end. Um, I've got a few other listings that, that I'm going to obviously load, but... Uh, yeah, um, it's been a it's been it's been fun. It's been I've been learning a lot, but um, happy to be a part of the team and very excited to learn as much as I can and to have a support system. So, um, hi everyone, and hopefully I'll chat to all of you at some point. Absolutely. So you're close to Antoinette, huh? You guys are close to the same market or in the same market? Uh, I'm not sure exactly, but I did look at at some listings, and I think uh, Antoinette's maybe. Not as east as I am, but uh, yeah, it's close enough. I think we're about 10, 15 minutes away from each other, maybe. Oh, great. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Although I live in the, uh, I live in Elodis Park, Vion, uh, okay. which is also on the other side of the highway, like you, but just further up, of course, more to Centurion side. Yeah. But I, I've been working um, my, my uh, sales and rental area for quite a number of, um, a few years now. So, so I actually don't even know what's going on in my own area where I stay. So, <laughs> so yeah. 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 Okay, great. Yeah, well, we'll have to catch up at some point. Yeah, now we'll definitely hook up for some coffee and, and have a chat and see how we can help each other. Awesome, I'd appreciate that. Ooh, see, that's what it's all about, guys. Yeah. <laughs> it means I'm so jealous, Ria. Uh, Ricky. Why? Oh, you're huh? so jealous. Why are you jealous? They're having coffee without me. Oh. oh. Hey, <laughs> we're all having coffee together right now. Yeah, yeah. let's make it a virtual coffee date. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, hey, Chelsea. So <laughs> So this is the kind of thing we're going to see more and more of as our team grows. We're going to see agents pop up uh, all over South Africa, close to, you know, close to certain agents that are on our team. We'll have people pop up close to Tarsi. We'll have people pop up, you know, close to Kalpana, Shavar, you know, more people close to Vian and Antoinette. So that's what is exciting here. We're just going to keep, keep growing. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about, um, you know, prospecting. OK, uh, prospecting today, uh, I want to kind of get you guys thoughts on like where you guys are with this. Uh, we need to hold each other accountable to this. This is the most important part of the process here in building your business, having those one on one conversations with property owners in our market, agents, if we're trying to recruit. But what, whatever, whatever direction we're going in, we have to be prospecting and having these one on one conversations with people in our market. OK, so um, you know, I know everybody has different schedules and uh, different things going on in their life. You know, not everybody can make calls at the same time every day. Not everybody can make calls every day. Okay. But what we have to do is you have to map out your week. 
okay, this is what my week looks like. Here's my, here's my schedule. You know, here's, here are the times I want to allocate towards making my calls and prospecting. Okay. Regardless of where you get your leads from. Okay. If it's online, if you circle prospect, if you look up the numbers, uh, wherever you get them from, you're going to have to sit down at some point and call them if you want business to happen. Mm. Right. True or false. Mm. I mean, there's no way to have a trans no way a transaction is going to happen without talking to someone. Okay. Yeah, and then yeah. the more people we talk to, the more deals we're going to do. That's just, mm. it's just math guys. Just math. Mm. It's just mm. simple, you know, math. Uh, so, so this is the most important part of our business. On top of that is how we're marketing to our database, whether it's through the weekly email or whatever your system is behind marketing to your database, as you have these one-on-one -on -one conversations and create those first great, great impressions, um, those great first impressions and, you know, collect their data and continue marketing to them. You know, that's a big part of this too, right? The data mm -hmm. collection on the back of personal branding through marketing to our database is what's going to create our personal brand over time. That's going to put us in a position where you don't, you're not going to have to make calls forever. There mm -hmm. is light at the end of the tunnel that you don't have to make calls anymore. I haven't made a cold mm -hmm. call since 2017 uh, because I built my database up to that size Okay. And then now I can live off past clients and referrals and still maintain that same level of income. But it's because I made all those calls in the beginning to build that brand on the back of the weekly email once I collected their data. Okay. Does this make sense? Yeah. Okay. So I just want to reiterate this. It's something I talk about a lot. It's a real simple strategy. I mean, everyone that follows me should have heard this like a hundred times so far, but I just want to keep echoing it you know, to the group that this is it. There's not like a, there's not like a shiny penny or a magic wand out there somewhere. That's just going to boom, create our business for us. You know, some technology or software or website that's just going to blow us up. You know, we, we we have to either be willing to put in the work and put that sweat equity in to talk to everyone on a one-on-one -on -one basis to build those friendships and build those relationships, or we're not, it's real black and white. You know, you're either going to do it or you're not going to do it. So, so I just want to kind of scream at you guys a little bit today about, you know, how we need to stay on a schedule. We need to keep a routine and it needs to be on a weekly basis and a daily basis, right? So we need to look at our week and say, okay, I can't make calls this day, but I can make calls on Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, you know, between, you know, nine and 1130, right? You set your week up and then you stick to it. And then every day when you wake up, you set your schedule for the day, your priorities and everything. This is what my, like I wake up and then I sit down and I go through, this is my legal pad. So I've got my legal pad that I take all my notes on and then I have my schedule book. Okay. My schedule book, like this is a whole week right here. So I know each day, you know, kind of what I have scheduled. Right. So, so this is where I have my week scheduled on my schedule book. And then this is my day to day pad. So right here I have kind of thing like little projects this is actually my daily schedule, even though I have it here on my weekly schedule, right? That's, this is kind of a general, this is kind of like I have a podcast I have to do. I have to show property, you know, I'm going to do a team call and all that stuff, but this gets more specific because now the, the day is here and I'm able to go through my emails and go through my notes and realize this is where I need to be and when I need to be there. Okay. So I have my schedule right here and then here are deals I'm negotiating. So I got projects, I've got my daily schedule right here. I have deals I'm negotiating here. Are EXP recruits that I'm working on today. And here are deals that I'm working on currently in my pipeline. This little thing right here, I've got Y-T-I-G-P-D-E-M-T-X. This, this is a reminder for me on my social media post that I want to have to do a YouTube. I need to do Instagram. I need to post my podcast. I need to send an email out to my coaching group. I need to send a text out. This is a reminder. And once I, once I go to IG and post there, then I, I automatically post just about the same content on LinkedIn and all these other platforms that are on my phone. So I don't have to write those down. You know, this is, this is my system, how I remind myself of everything and everywhere I need to post. Here's my projects I'm working on. Here's my daily schedule. Here's the real estate deals I'm negotiating. Here's the EXP agents I'm recruit, trying to recruit today. And here are current deals in my pipeline. Everything's right here on this one sheet of paper. And so I, and so I sit down in the morning and really focus on 
developing this piece of paper because this is the Bible for me today. This is what I live by today. This is everything I need to know. And once you focus and actually get everything out on this piece of paper, you don't have to think anymore. You don't have to worry about this, that, or the other. Everything's right here. Now you can just execute. So, and, and then tomorrow what I'll do is I'll tear this sheet off. I'll set it down next to the empty sheet of paper. I'll look at it and I'll transfer things over that didn't get done. You know, I'll use it as a guide to make tomorrow's in the morning, tomorrow morning. I'll use the today's to make a guide for tomorrow. Right. And then I'll go through my emails. I'll go through my text messages, everything and get everything down before I start working. I know everything I need to do. OK, so it's really important to take that time in the morning to schedule your day and figure out everything you need, you know, uh, to focus on for the day. Reminders, negotiating deals, listing appointments, this, that, the other. But the real focus I wanted to focus on today is the prospecting. We've got to really nail down when we're going to prospect, you know, on a weekly basis, what days are we going to prospect? And then we cannot be negotiable on that. It has to happen. If you're not, if you're not prospecting, if you're not following up with leads, if you're not reaching out to new leads, your business is not going to grow. It's just not going to grow. If you want your business to grow, then you've got to do this. Okay. So, just wanted to throw that out there again, just to reiterate, I'll remind you guys, you know, every so often how important this is to try to snap you. Cause a lot of people they'll, they'll get in the routines of make of doing the calls, but then they'll get off routine. You know, they'll get busy or they'll kind of slip away. It's kind of like working out, you know, you buy the gym membership and you go for a week, you know, and then you don't go anymore. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, you know, a lot of people do that. So, you know, prospecting is the same way you get caught up, you know, you're doing deals, you're busy, you, you have life and things happen and get in the way. But I'm telling you, if you want to be the top producer, okay, in your market, you have to stay on track with this, you know, successful people are super disciplined. And it's not like I'm saying, oh, you need to prospect and you need to do this, you need to do that, you need to do this, that and the other. I'm not saying that I'm saying one thing, just be disciplined on one thing. The prospecting. Right. So I uh, just wanted to throw that out there. You guys have any questions? Um, Ricky, I'm, I've, I've got, uh, I ran some Google AdWords, you know, a friend of mine kind of plays in that space. I, I set a very small budget. I've got about five or six leads from that, you know, some were rental people looking for rental. So that didn't really, you know, that's not really, uh, you know, great leads, but one was, um, a lady that inherited massive pieces of land, you know, that that's worth quite a lot. You know, one is probably five and a half million. The other one's a little bit inaccessible, but through that process, I, I managed to secure the neighbor as well. That's also looking to sell. And that's also five and a half million rand. So I've got those two land deals, but in order to get them sold, I'm working with another agent. Um, that's an auctioneer. Um, it's a very reputable company up in Pretoria. It's called uh, just imagine properties. And, He's got a bunch of developers that are buying land. So how would you advise working on that deal and, and, and in terms of paperwork? I mean, uh, just a, maybe it's maybe a more local question for Kalpana, but signing a mandate with him to make sure that we're working together and we can split that commission because it's quite a large, you know, it's quite a big deal. And, and I couldn't do it this quick without him. You know, he certainly brought a whole bunch of guys to the table very quickly. You know, he's got a database of, of developers buying big pieces of land. So what's the, what, what, what do I have to watch out for so that this doesn't go south? Well, um, yeah, and you're right. Um, get with, get with Kalpana, right? I learned how to say her name. Are y'all proud of me? <laughs> are y'all, are y'all proud of you me? Want. You know, they, Anywhere they were you just, want, they, they were just, they were just <laughs> letting me just look like a fool to the world. <laughs> You know, they didn't say anything. They didn't say anything. They're just like, you know, let him keep saying Calpana, you know, just let him keep saying Calpana. You know? We got people in India on the call. We got, you know, people all over South Africa, you know, you know, just all over the world. You know, let's just, you know, let's let this real estate guru look like a fool, you know. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thank you. I, still, I, I just have to add that I started calling Calpana Calpana. 
So I mean, <laughs> come on. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, hey, well, there you go. Hey, maybe I can change the world, right? You know, maybe I can. <laughs> So yeah, um, Vion, see, I'm learning how to say you guys' names here. W sounds like a V. Gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. So, you know, getting with Kalpana um, on the paperwork, you know, is going to be key, right, for that. And what you're really talking about here and what your real question is, is how do you lock this thing in to where paperwork-wise it protects you, Correct. Yeah, getting with Calpin on that is what's going to really, you know, seal the deal for you to make sure you've got the paperwork correctly. She's going to be the one to kind of walk you through, um, you know, um, locking that in. But, you know, my advice is just my general advice on that scenario is just to be very open with them. Right. And very clear on what your intentions are, you know, and really establish that you are the agent you know, that they are going to work with, you know, on an exclusive basis, right? That's what you're looking for. Exclusivity, correct? Yeah. Just, just make sure that they, that, that they understand that's what you're there for and make it very clear verbally, you know, before we write up the paperwork and send it to them to sign and everything, make sure that you guys understand each other on a verbal basis, you know, and that's, then that's communicated. It's not like you're talking to them, you know, and, oh, we're going to set, we're going to help you sell. We're going to do this and that. And then you send them the paperwork for exclusivity. And that was never talked about. And now they're like, what the heck? We didn't agree to this. You know what I mean? It's better to be clear up front and honest about what your intentions are and what you want to do and what you're going to provide the value you're going to provide for that exclusivity. You know, like, for example, you, you got a, you got a team here that's behind you, you know, you bring a deal like that to the table, we're going to help you sell it. As our team grows here in South Africa, you know, we're going to have more and more leverage to do deals like this. We're going to have more and more leverage to get development. So to do big deals like this, because we're going to have a team of 300 agents, 800 agents, 1200 agents, 2000 agents, you know, that we can communicate these developments to. I don't, I don't know if you guys realize this or not, or if you guys can see that far down the road, but, but as we grow to 500, 1,000, 1,500, 2,000 agents, we're going to have so much power with these developers because we're going to be able to say, we have 2,000 agents on our team here that's going to be ready. Who else, who else is going to be able to say in South Africa they have 2,000 agents you know, uh, that we can immediately send this development to? How easy it's going to be for us to get exclusive rights to sell development and a sole mandate on an entire development when we have a team of 1,200 agents behind us. That's, it's, it's going to create a very favorable position for us in the development space and, and, even, and even regular listings. Think about how easy it's going to be you know, once we have, you know, you, once you can say we have 150 agents around the country. We have 250 agents around the country you know, that, that is on our team that we're going to send your listing to if you sign this sole mandate. Think about, think about the leverage that we will have to get sole mandates as our team grows. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, that's, that's big picture thinking here. We're creating a scenario that's going to give us leverage to get sole mandates. So, and so here, you fun. On that, I mean, Yes, you are. Go cover it. Oh, no, I was All just right. going to cover so, the joint mandate. You go for it. All right. So, yeah, you know, I mean, that's part of the reason I joined the team. You know, we discussed that day one yeah. When, when, yeah. when we had that. But the thing that I'd like to get our head around, and we've discussed it a few times, but I, I don't think we've really, and I, today doesn't need to be about that. I'm just planting the seed, is, you know, as we grow our network of agents, how do we leverage our network of buyers within that system so that when we do get these listings, we can pump it out to people that we know are going to buy it or going to invest in it or whatever it may be. What say again now? So I understand what we're saying in terms of building the team of agents. Yeah. And, you know, I understand that vision and that picture. 
how do we start building our database of buyers within our group of agents? How do we start focusing on that side of the equation? Because the, the traditional or... model is control the stock. Mm. Mm. No, I understand. I understand that that's going to happen organically, Shavar. That's something you're not going to have to worry about. Okay. Okay. The, the agents, there, there's going to be, it comes back to what we were saying before the meeting here, 80, 20, right? 20% of the agents are going to right. get out there and they're going to crush it. Okay. And they're going to have right. great databases full of clients. Yeah. And if, if you really, oh. if you really um, filter it down to even like the top 5%, you know, the top 5%, mm. you know, 20% are producing, but the top 5% are really good. Okay. Really good. Mm. They're going to have buyers. They have clientele. Okay. So, so if you okay. have a team, if you have a team of 500, okay. Mm. And you got a hundred, which is 20% who are producers, think about these numbers. Okay. And we get our team to 500, we're going to have a hundred producers. All right. And then, and then yeah. we're going to have, we're going to have, you know, uh, we're going to have 25, we're going to have 25 who are very good producers, very high producers. Okay. <laughs> And, and, and between the 100 producers and the 25 of those who are very high producers, we're not going to like they will build their databases. These people are very highly skilled agents who mm -hmm. sell a lot of properties and have a great clientele. So, okay. you know, that's something that's going to happen organically as our team grows. We're going to bring on these really great agents that have their clientele in place. Okay. And then, and then what's so great is, is the 500 agents, a hundred that are producing the 400 who aren't producing, we're training them to try to help them get going, you know, but where the buyers are going to come from, how do we help these agents? We just have to train them on exactly what I'm telling you today, Shavar. And it comes back to this prospecting, because when you're calling mm -hmm. property owners to create friendships with them, who, let me ask yeah. you, who are buying, who are the buyers? Okay. It's people in the market, uh -huh. right? No, no. Well, it's people in the market. Okay. And most of the people in the market who are buying are what property owners. Okay. They already own property. Okay. So, so as we're prospecting, like I'm telling you to do, and you're creating your database and you're building five new friends a day, that should be the goal every day for everyone. Five new friends a day with property owners in your market. That should be just the goal every day. Mm -hmm. Right. And if you're doing that, if you're doing a weekly email or something similar to build your personal brand, you're going to have plenty of buyers. And when you build that database, Shavar, and you're doing, you're doing a weekly email and you've been doing this for two years and you have 2,800 property owners getting that email. And then we as a team bring on a development and then you email those 2,000 property owners that you have relationships with. Some of those property owners are going to buy a, a unit in that development. Mm -hmm. And if we have all of our agents following this model, if we have all of our agents following this model, all right, look, look at where we're going to be. If ever, if we have all of our agents building five new friends or property owners a day, doing a weekly email, building that brand through the email, and then we land like Antoinette gets a great listing, you know, and then we, we share it with the team on the group chat. And then they email it. Everybody emails it out on their weekly email. Think about how powerful that is for us. You see, yeah. so it's all going to come back to the prospecting, you know, mm -hmm. everybody needs to be doing the prospecting five new friends a day, building their business, selling properties. Okay. And sharing each other's listings on our weekly emails, mm -hmm. you know, and as we grow the the leverage behind our numbers is just going to grow larger and larger and larger. I honestly, I've come to realize that, I think we've just been brainwashed a little bit by local coaches. Yeah. Uh, Kalpana, that prospecting is to actually uh, get sellers to mm. actually get a mandate mm. from them, which mm. is totally wrong because each and every person out there is going to be a seller or a buyer somewhere mm. in the future. Yeah. And mm. I've been long and hard about it. So when you pick up the phone to do prospecting, you know, you have to be prepared to to actually um, take that person up as a buyer. You're engaging with them, not only as a possible seller, but as a buyer. And yes. that's why today I've got my listings, but I've got not, I don't have a buyer book. Mm -hmm. And why not? Because I haven't been doing the prospecting the way I should have. Mm -hmm. yep. And also, sure. it made me realize how powerful the email is. 
it's really made me so this week i want to get my email format up and ready get my facebook business page up and running that's mm -hmm. it because it doesn't help if i've got nice listings and 20 exclusive mandates but if those mandates the property those properties do not have an audience that mm -hmm. it can reach i'm not going to sell anything mm -hmm. i can have all the stock but if i don't have that I don't have a, a sale. And yeah. God only like days that we rely on private property and Especially, property. To yes. Yeah, exactly. Great point. Yeah. Great point. Because especially in South Africa, where there's so many open mandates, if you yes. actually prospect and you and you and you look two years down the road when you have three thousand property owners in your pocket that mm -hmm. know you and love you through your <laughs> weekly email, okay, sure you'll take an open mandate. Why? Because you know, you can email it out to your 3000 owners and you're going to be the agent that sells it because you've got the clientele. Yeah. And so it's they bring. Yeah, no, definitely. The power is in the buyer and we've been uh, told that the power is in the seller. You've got to get that yeah. seller to sell that, to sign that exclusive mandate, which is wrong because you can have 10 or 20 exclusive mandates, but if you don't have buyers, you know, don't have them. Yeah, and if you're not yep. in contact, constant contact through an email with the buyers, your buyer audience, it's also a lost cause. Prospecting, as important as it is in the U.S., is even twice as important in South Africa because of the way that you guys, the industry, is set up. You have to build mm -hmm. your own brand, your own audience of buyers and sellers. Uh. Over here, over here. Over here, I can list something and put it on MLS. It's exclusive. Yes. Any agent can sell it. They see it the moment I list it. Some mm -hmm. another agent sells it, and we split the commission. Done deal. Easy peasy. Sure. Right over there, not the same. Um, I, I could literally just get listings and be great because because I because any buyer out there, you know, can buy the property and I'm good to go. Um, mm -hmm. Over there, different ball game. You have to build your own database, and your database is gonna is your business. So that's why it's so important to listen to what I'm saying about scheduling your week around prospecting, allocating the time, never missing a session, mm -hmm. and creating five new friends or property owners every day, adding them to your database behind the weekly email. Yes, Vion. Hey, um, so in regards to the weekly email, I've I've, I've got about 230 contacts on it. Okay. My first my first week was 25% open rate. Next week was 40%. And then this one is 10%. Is there an ideal time of day to send this out? Cause I'm sending it on a Wednesday. Is there a, in your experience, is there a better time of day where people are more likely to open that email? Um, no, no, there's not a certain time of day that I found that I like better. Uh, I just send it out any, any time of day on every Wednesday. It's got to be the same day every week. That's very important because mm -hmm. it shows that consistency. Mm -hmm. But if, if I pick a time where like, if I'm busy Wednesday, I don't have time to do the email and I create it Tuesday and have it automatically go out. I normally do eight 30 in the morning is normally when I do it. But again, it doesn't matter. Here's where you're probably losing beyond, because if you, if you have a 25% open rate, and then the next week of 40%, and then the next week of 10%, it could be in within the content of your email. Like they opened it up because they were curious, you know, and then they didn't like what they saw, and then they didn't open up that following week. So what I want you to do, are you using constant contacts? If you could, um, if you could go in constant contacts and just WhatsApp me the link, to your uh to those but all three emails and and put on there for, this was the first week with 25 percent. here's the second yeah. week here's the link with 40 percent. here's the third week with 10 percent. if you could send me those links and let me look at each of those emails and then i'll i'll respond back and i'll tell you kind of where i may even call you it just depends on on what i think but i'll give you some feedback because what's probably happening because i see this a lot is it's probably within the format of the email Maybe the font's too yeah. small, maybe too many words. Maybe there's too much information. You got to keep it simple. You see my emails, you know, it's simple. It's just a couple sentences, mm -hmm. big font, some nice pictures. So send me those links and I'll take a look and see what I think.
Hey, I'm really okay. getting awesome. the hang Thank of you. this whole. I'm really getting the hang of this whole South African thing. <laughs> yeah, try my try my surname, Ricky. Huh? Serfontein. Vian Serfontein. Safutain. <laughs> Safutain. <laughs> no, that's not it. <laughs> but we'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> hey hey like listen young. in america that means show me the money so if that's what you want <laughs> that's what you want vion yeah you got it it's surf like in surf with uh, surf, surf, surf on time yeah surf on time surf on uh like uh uh the irish on time <laughs> old lang syne <laughs> surf yeah. on time or they actually do it as a team, a... like Goldstein, <laughs> Ricky. Yeah. It's a lot like um, the surname Goldstein. You can say Goldstein, so you surf on, surf on team. Surf Listen, on team. y'all can surf on team all you want to. We <laughs> surf on the water over here. <laughs> all right. In Fontaine, actually, so, and does sometimes, mean sometimes we eat surf. And, sometimes we eat surf and turf. Okay, that's steak <laughs> and shrimp. By the way, over here. So that's how we do it over here, right? But it is actually funny because uh, uh, Fontaine is actually the Afrikaans for fountain. Fountain. Water. So, yeah. yes, surf on the w- water fountain. Surf there on the we fountain. go. There we go. <laughs> okay. So, well, yeah. We're on the same page. Trust me. We're on the same page. I can tell you that much. Okay. Yeah. Hey, if you can get my name right, yours is nothing beyond <laughs> hey vion yours was easy okay you know what the problem was you know what the problem was they let me go with calpana for six months okay that's where the problem is here i started calling her calpana <laughs> <laughs> i'm easy i just go with the flow i've oh, given up man. i mean i, I don't I was wondering, am I right or am I wrong? And then you know what? I know. Then I'm, I not gonna, I'm not. I'm not going to play cards with uh, Kalpana. I'm not going to play poker because every time I'm thinking back to every time I said her name, you know, and and how straight. But like she, I say Kalpana, she's like. <laughs> I mean, not a smirk. She didn't shake her head. She didn't. She didn't go like this. I would at least like to, hey, hey, hold on a second. Now, let me let me help you here with my name or, you know, maybe, hey, we'll have a separate conversation, you know, on WhatsApp later about my name or something, you know. I was <laughs> just being polite. Calpana, now you know why I call you sometimes Miss K. <laughs> I was wondering, though. <laughs> sure. The best one was Shabar when this guy calls him. Shriver, and I thought, yeah. oh my god, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Shriver, Shriver, yeah. Shriver. That, that's a- <laughs> okay, guys. Um, let's wrap it up here. You guys have anything else today? I'm gonna get to work. No, all good, thanks very much. All good. Okay, all right. I just want to ask one question. So, so when I started. I started off well with the 90 day program and then I realized, oh, gee, I'll have to start doing some rentals again or something to, to just bring in some, improve the cash flow, you know? So if no one resumes the 90 day, do you have to start? Because I see a lot of people on your group, the Facebook group says, okay, I'm restarting day one. Mm. So, so I guess yeah, listen, also, here's the I thing. Like if you, if you went through the 90 days, and and you 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 enjoy that experience, okay? And then you're just kind of like, what do I do now? Do the ninety days again? Do it over okay. and over and over again? You know, if yeah, that if that's think, if, yeah. Because I think if you started doing it and there was a long lapse that you didn't do it, the the daily prospecting, I think it's better than to start off to press the reset button and start again from day mm-hmm. one. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And everybody's different, you know. Some people take that ninety days. And they figure out, you know, how they want to, they, they figure out what they, what they, how they want to organize their weeks. And then it helps them organize their routine and they just go from there. Some people like to do the 90 days over and over again. So it just depends on you. 
I think so it's actually a good idea. The, when do you do the 28 day course? It's like midway through the 90 days. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Thought as much. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Tarsi, did you have something? No, I, I was listening, uh, but okay. I learned a lot. Okay. <laughs> good. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad. Cool, guys. Well, y'all go crush it and hit me up on WhatsApp. Okay. Vion, send me those uh, links to those emails so I can take a look at those. And you guys uh, hit me you. up on uh, WhatsApp if you need anything at all or in the group. Mm -hmm.